Therefore, please be aware that the Commission staff is making an audio and video recording of this meeting. Please turn off your camera and microphone if you do not wish to be recorded. For the purposes of the record, Commissioners Evans, Lubinow, and Manfredi are present, and we may be joined uh, by Commissioners Love and Morris at some point. Tonight, tonight's meeting proceedings will follow typical BCDC subcommittee meeting format, beginning with a brief presentation from the proponent, followed by comments from BCDC commissioners, followed by public testimony. A reminder to proponent teams that presentations will be limited to 10 minutes. BPDA staff will give presenters a two minute warning. With that, unless we have any questions or comments from the commissioners, uh, we're ready for the first proponent team to present. And Seth, I just wanted to mention uh, Laura Solano uh, will be joining us later, correct? She's recused. She, you did not mention her. Thank you for that. Yes, uh, Commissioner Solano uh, is recused from this project and will be joining later. Thank you. Okay, uh, so if the uh, team from Boston University wants to share your screen, I believe I've elevated the presenters to co-host. Yeah, thank you, Seth. I think we're just looking for Sean Gallagher. Sean's able to share the screen. Let me make him co-host. Uh, thank you, Seth. And uh, just as a, let me shop, stop sharing. And before the team gets going, uh, if I can, hold on one second, please. So for uh, Boston University, this will be the second presentation of proposed projects associated with their IMP uh, to the design subcommittee following a presentation to the full commission on March 5th. The first presentation focused on a proposed project seeking Article 80D, which is IMP, and Article 80B, large project entitlements uh, at 700 Commonwealth Avenue, also known as Warren Towers. Commissioners Linda Eastley, Jonathan Evans, Anne-Marie Lubinow, and Catherine Morris were present mm -hmm. at the most recent BCDC subcommittee and referred that proposed project uh, of Warren Towers to the full commission for final review and recommendation and recommended that other proposed projects associated with the IMP be reviewed further. It is my understanding that commissioners, uh, actually Love and Solano have recused themselves from review. I don't believe I've missed any others. And so with that, I invite the proponent team to begin whenever you're ready. Thank you, Seth. And thank you, members of the commission. For the record, my name is Ken Ryan. I'm the Assistant Vice President for Government and Community Affairs at Boston University. I'm joined tonight by my colleague, Sonia Richards, Associate Vice President for Planning, Design, and Construction at Boston University. I'm also joined by Sean Gallagher, Director of Sustainable Design at Diller, Scafidio, and Renfro and Chris Donahue, principal at MVVA. Um, before we get into tonight's presentation, we just wanted to provide a brief overview. Uh, thank you to Seth for giving uh, a summary of where we are in terms of our BCDC review to date. Uh, as Seth alluded to, we were before the commission on March 19th for a subcommittee meeting uh, to discuss the renovation of Warren Towers. Um, as Seth alluded to, that project uh, was deemed worthy of going back to the full committee um, for a vote. Uh, tonight, we are mm -hmm. going to be presenting to you uh, the Party School of Global Studies, which is the only new construction project associated with our two-year institutional master plan. At this time, we are only seeking Article 80D zoning for this project. Uh, a future Article 80B large project review submission will be sent to the BPDA into the BCDC for further review and approval at a later date. Uh, and finally, uh, our MUGAR renovation library um, is the last project associated with this two-year institutional master plan. Um, 
not ready for us to um, seek any type of Article 80B review for this project at this time. Um, but again, once we are ready for that project, we will be submitting that uh, for review uh, both by the BPDA and BCDC. But tonight, again, it's solely focused on the Party School of Global Studies uh, and the zoning of that particular project. And again, our hope is to be able to bring that project back uh, to the commission, to the agency for a further design review discussion at the appropriate time. So with that, I will kick it over to Sean to get into more about the project. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, as um, Ken has said, I'm Sean Gallagher. I'm principal and um, director of this project and also director of sustainable design at Dillard Scafidi on Renfro. Really excited to be here talking about this particular project because the mission of the party school is to send people around the world to work with local communities and actually develop long term or what they call the long range future of sustainable cultural, economic and environmental initiatives. Um, for those communities and then come back to this building um, more or less like a little bit of a UN um, to really kind of uh, make places um, more vibrant around the world. I think the last time that we met, we kind of did a brief overview of the project and a couple of the things that we heard when we were having those conversations was a little bit more specificity on like, why did we choose to put the project where we did? Um, how are we addressing the general context um, of the campus with Bay State Road, with the site selection that we have, um, as well as how did you really go through and determine the zoning and height uh, proposal for this project? And as we know from the previous presentation, what you see in front of you is the site that we selected, and it's uh, an existing parking lot behind um, the CAS building or the College of Arts and Sciences and Sci Hall. And when we started taking a look at this uh, proposal for this school and what the mission of the school is, one of the things that we were aware of, one of the things that we wanted to achieve was to have the ability to actually densify the campus at the heart of the campus by at the same time creating more green space. Mm -hmm. We knew those things were important to the mission of the school and they were important to the mission um, of, of this particular project. And as you can see here, the site is um, the parking lot and it's within the existing boundaries of the use um, property um, just um, a little bit um, beyond Bay State Road. When we started to take a look at the site itself and visit the site, or the, at least the area that we were determining to be at the heart of the campus, one of the things that we noticed here behind the College of Arts and uh, Sciences and next to the BU Beach, which is very popular green space um, for the campus and the admissions building, is that we noticed that the parking lot was already doing more than what a traditional parking lot um, normally um, does. It was more than just a place for parking cars. In fact, there was a lot of pedestrian traffic that we were actually observing um, moving through the site throughout the day. Um, and this is mainly because one, like we said, the BU Beach was um, a very kind of valuable green space and students were coming from the College of Arts and Sciences, um, Bay State Road, um, and uh, Commonwealth to actually activate this space. But also one of the things that was kind of lesser known is that the emissions building over to the left um, is where a lot of people come to actually have their first experience at the campus, meet with larger tour groups and tour the campus. And what happens is outside of the admissions building on the plaza, they still form big groups and they actually walk through the parking lot to start their tour of the campus. We're like, whoa, this is like kind of a new front door entry to the campus. And so what we began to think was, well, it would be a shame to kind of get in the way of this um, pedestrian traffic. Um, and is there ways that we could actually start to facilitate uh, a better kind of experience um, that's already happening here um, in this place? And we thought, well, could we squeeze right up against the lot line wall by the service alley um, on Bay State Road and behind the back of house of Sci Hall, there's no windows there. Could we squeeze the program, really be efficient with the program and have the most limited building footprint possible for um, this site. Um, and what we noticed was that by doing that, um, you know, not only were we able to be able to like, obviously not take up more site than necessary, but what happens is that we start to actually conceal some of the back of house services, really put a terminus to the end of Bay State Road into this um, area and then create a new green space that actually allows light and air into the classrooms that are in the College of Arts and Sciences and not obstruct the views um, to uh, the Charles River. So we really kind of worked on the efficiency to kind of create this smaller building footprint. And the real kind of potential 
um, that we were envisioning when we were thinking about this is that it could become a new potential central green for the campus itself. Right now, BU campus doesn't have a central green. And by setting the building here and not obstructing any future planning, we could actually create more than just the acre of green space. Um, it can be a lot more than that itself and really be in the mission of the long range future planning um, for the uh, for the uh, master plan. But as 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 you see on the slide here, this is not for this project right now, but this is how we were thinking about the siting of the building. Um, if we go back to plan form of the project, one of the things you take a look at is that this is the actual building footprint and we put it as close as we possibly could to the existing um, service alley and as much as we could, um, but still fulfilling the program requirements um, um, aligned with side hall and behind side hall. And then you can see the rest of it is a uh, parking lot. But the full intention for this project and part of the actual budget for this project is to add this new green space um, as part of the party school um, project. And a new green space would be in an extension of BU Beach and um, at first and Warren Albert Mall itself. Um, and kind of connect the two spaces so people can go from the Marsh Chapa Plaza to the Admissions Plaza back and forth um, and really utilize um, this, um, this space. Um, and one of the things that we're thinking about when you're adding a new green space to a campus is how will this actually start to create places um, that extend the activities that already happen there, but actually provide new activities. Um, so one of the things that we knew we wanted to do was actually create um, places of arrival um, for that circulation at the two um, ends um, of the central potential central green in the future. Create a more, larger gathering space in the middle that can actually accept larger populations of the community and the public and the campus as a whole, and really add some ecological services to the campus. Create more than just lawns. Um, we wanted to do habitat renewal, and we really wanted to push some woodland activities up against the existing um, uh, College of Arts and Sciences um, to really kind of know that it would flourish here and deal with stormwater and bring habitat back to the center of the campus. And so we imagine that the BU project, sorry, the party school project would start this framework itself where you'd have an arrival um, at um, uh, Entry Grove um, near the building, near the admissions plaza, and you'd be able to walk through to um, the plaza of Marsh Chapel. But the project itself, the scope that's involved with this particular um, proposal is um, outlined here in the dotted line. We'll be making the woodland of Edo and the entry grove as part of the project. Um, but it's actually trying to do more than that. One of the things that we want to do is improve accessibility to the campus as a whole. And so and we're looking Sean, at- Sean, just a yeah. two minute warning there. Okay, great. <laughs> um, uh, campus as a whole. So we're actually providing ADA access to the College of the Historic College of Arts and Sciences. Um, and one of the other bigger aspirations is to have the program itself of the party school be public at the base of the building and to create a forum that um, was um, in that location. So you can see the rendering here. The idea for the project is to have a very kind of transparent um, public um, ground floor that has a forum that actually um, addresses the meadows and addresses the entry grove so that there could be clear visual connection um, between the activities inside and outside. And when you're inside this space, you'll have um, ample seating areas to have even TED Talks or informal gatherings um, so that when the weather is a little bit um, a little bit more cold, that some of these activities from the landscape can come inside and then in the summer go back outside. And we think this is really important. Um, but we also want the building envelope itself to respect Bay State Road proper's orientation so that the building itself shifts and allows the public space to be actually the terminus of Bay State Road, um, the focal point, instead of having the building itself be the focal point um, of this contextual item. The height itself, and I'll talk about it within the next <laughs> couple of minutes, couple of seconds I have, um, is uh, proposed to be about 186 feet um, tall. So it's about the same um, height as Questrom, the spears of the historic building um, in this middle range between obviously the much taller towers of Law Tower and the Data Sciences, um, and then Bay State Road proper. So it's right at this middle height, you can see it in here. And when you're on Commonwealth, or you're coming off the green line, um, it um, will be visible, um, but it will be kind of along the datum of the spires of the historic building. And then when you look at it from the data sciences perspective itself, it will be visible, just a piece of it will be visible and it'll be aligned with um, in perspective point with the 
um, uh, law tower itself. Um, and then across from the Charles River, which is really important, obviously, it has visibility from the Charles. Um, obviously, it's not one of the taller things along the Charles River. But the big reason, one of the big reasons when we kind of really made the program pretty efficient is that this 180 feet or about this approximately 12 stories is what can be built as of right in mass timber. And one of the missions is obviously to tackle the carbon and how we actually build innovatively in our earth fabric moving forward. And so right now, the Party School of Global Studies is um, uh, programmed to be a timber tower, a mass timber tower, and will be the first mass timber tower um, in the Boston area and hopefully find an academic institution. Um, but it's not just that. It's going to be fossil fuel free. Um, one of the things we're working with is the triple glazing to make sure it's a the minimum um, envelope and the most secure envelope we can create and also be um, solar ready on its roofscape, um, as well as all electric and radiant um, um, uh, systems itself. So it's completely um, all electric. And so what we hope is that, you know, in the immediate term, we would be able to add an acre of green space. We'd be able to prove that we can build um, uh, more carbon um, sensitive in the future in our urban fabric and um, and then have a long range future that brings uh, a central green to the campus. Did I make it on time, Seth? Thank you. Thank you, Seth, for the additional little bit of time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, thank you for that. And uh, Commissioners, um, feel free to dive in. Thank you. Could you go back to slide 18, please? I just was trying to figure out, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I appreciate the um, your presentation of this information. It was very clear what your rationale is. Um, I, I think the, um, I really like the approach of thinking about that open space that is part of the parcel you are working on as part of a larger whole. Um, actually, let me pause on that comment. So where, um, just where where are we looking, where are we standing in this image or where is the viewer? So the viewer is um, on Bay State Road about a okay. block and a half down looking towards um, that existing parking lot site that's at the end of Bay State Road. Um, and one of the things that we are trying to show here is that the um, zoning envelope that we're creating um, um, respects Bay State Road proper, the orientation mm -hmm. of Bay State Road proper, but actually um, is aligned with the front of that last building um, that's adjacent um, at the end, even though Bay State Road actually has a little bit of a turn um, right. at the end of it. Um, and instead of going along that turn and really kind of being just very literal about street wall to street wall, keeping that curve going, the building becomes the focal point and we're like we, we really don't want it to. it's a little bit of an anomaly there like we really want people just to fall into the public space okay thank you it, you know as we've been reviewing projects at bcdc that that are more or less along the riverfront i've been thinking a lot about sort of what is the characteristic mm -hmm. of of the riverfront, you know, there, there's something, you know, the riverfront is the, the Charles River is really sort of a, a street in Boston, or it has, it's part of the identity of the city. And while, um, and I think there's an interesting precedent that dates back decades of sort of towers along the river. Yeah. So I appreciate, I, I my concern is always, um, as we begin to develop more sites along the river, how do we maintain that characteristic and the permeability between communities away from the river and the river. So from that standpoint, your logic, you know, the logic you present, the, the rationale you presented makes sense to me. Um, one observation just as well as the rationale of the, again, that open space on the site becoming part of a larger open space that becomes, you know, sort of maybe perhaps the signature space for BU, the the mm -hmm. one observation I'd make as a non lance as an architect and not a landscape architect <laughs> is is you know how as as you've noted there isn't much green space on BU's campus. So thinking about what is the programming of that space, I imagine it might serve multiple purposes and perhaps um, you know a lot of activity, a density of activity. Mm -hmm. Uh, I appreciate the intention to kind of restore the ecology to the space, but also mm -hmm. 
just want to think about in terms of the legibility. I, I just was really struck by in one of your diagrams, sort of seeing the, seeing that the space you're working on and the other spaces all of a sudden sort of become, you know, one space, almost like the central part of BU and just would encourage you. And I know this is not the part we're reviewing per se, but just think about how that can become uh, an organizing principle of your design and then how that also informs the design of the landscape itself. Yeah, I'm Thank really you. excited to be working with Chris on that. I think, you know, um, from MVV over to help us na navigate that. And you, and you said it's a balance between, of course, we have to do the ecological um, uh, infrastructure, but as well as making place making for the activities that are really important to the campus and the community. And I think also as many people are aware, I've just, I've really been thinking a lot about, again, what makes um, these new districts or these places we're creating of their place and what makes it a VU. So right. just, you know, it's as much about the landscape as the building mm -hmm. and the, re the relationship between buildings and landscape and use. So mm -hmm. just, you know, keeping that in mind while at the same time, you know, knowing that you will have uh, an opportunity to design a piece of architecture that is, you know, that, that has quite a bit of visibility on the city skyline. Right, right. Thank you. Here I am. I have a question, which <clears throat> is more a curiosity driven uh, than maybe purview of BCDC. Uh, but and and but I'll start by saying um, I think what the university is doing here is um, really really positive. And one of the questions I know we asked last time we saw this or when we saw this in the previous um, um, IMP review, <clears throat> I think it was Linda who asked a, a very good question about why this footprint, why here? And what she meant precisely was how does it kind of lock into its surround? And I think you've um, <clears throat> you addressed that tonight. I'm wondering this, this is a 70,000 square foot building that is 12 stories tall, which if my mental math is right, is about 6,000 square feet on a floor. How, can you give us a very brief description of the program and how that works in that floor plan, how you envision it and what, I'm, I guess I'm really taking the next step forward and saying, <clears throat> looking forward to a building uh, how does a building work, uh, an academic building work uh, as such a, a, an elegant, simple um, tower? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the things that we're really focused on is building, obviously, community inside uh, a vertical landscape. And, um, and, you know, that's a little bit more difficult. But one of the things that's interesting about the program um, or about the school itself, the party school, is that right now they're in um, individually pieced in some brownstone, some other academic buildings as these kind of little satellites yes. around the campus. And they're usually in places where they come in and they have a living room and they come in and they actually have a little bit of a public space and then they go and have their kind of event space and then offices around it. And so what we're attempting to do is actually create neighborhoods that um, can um, facilitate that, that way of being um, because a lot of what they're doing is talking with people to try to get their understandings and their concerns. So it's not really suited for an academic building with long hallways. So we think that these pods um, that are actually going to be a smaller footprint where everybody can gather around a living room is actually um, advantageous for um, a vertical stacking of the building. We hope to create four to five neighborhoods that reflect the centers that already exist in the program and are around the different um, uh, countries of the world. Can you go back to the plan mm -hmm. uh, that illustrated all of the access paths? Um, oh, okay, yeah. Hold on. Sorry, I'm usually on my iPad <laughs> where I can draw and write. Um, but I know with, with large groups like this, having two things at once is hard. But this is this is the plan? That yes. Thinking? Okay, great. Yeah. And and I guess I'm um, um, 
I'm wondering a little bit about access um, uh, and, and and well, it, maybe just elaborate a little bit about about access. If I'm coming here as as you said as a as a first time visitor, um, mm -hmm. how do I get here as a pedestrian? I'm somewhere on campus. I'm somewhere on Com Ave, and I'm mm -hmm. finding my way to the Party School. Yeah. Um, so in the um, if you were coming from the you know from the Green Line um, and coming from Commonwealth. Um, and you go to the Marsh Chapel Plaza. Basically, the idea is what we observed is that people were moving, um, more or less sometimes moving down through here and cutting through behind and then going to the admissions building or they're coming here and going to BU Beach. And the other thing that we saw was students when classes were letting out, specifically here in the College of Arts Center, there's pretty large classrooms in this building. They were coming out of this back entrance and moving through here and going to BU Beach. So we thought those two things were really important in working with Chris to kind of create a sequence that facilitated those movements. And then a lot of students live down Bay State Road, um, and a lot of the public comes up here to get access to um, uh, the Esplanade. And so a lot just come through here and walk along. And we thought, you know, you have the plaza here, that this becomes a little bit more of a BU Beach extension and green space um, that the forum, the public space of party opens itself up um, and is a little bit more welcoming for people doing that kind of crossing uh, of three directions at that area. Thank you. I, I think, I, I like I say, I think what you're, the big idea here of taking a parking lot and, and making green space and, and creating this, um, what will be, I think, a very visible um, um totem in in at the center of campus is uh can be very powerful and look forward to the next phase of development thank you yeah i'd echo that from david and i appreciate this conversation now um just because i think maybe my one comment and yeah, I, I appreciate the the design of the presentation maybe my one comment is um as this evolves in future conversations just the idea of this <laughs> building kind of being this pure form that to what extent does it exist kind of in the round field versus kind mm -hmm. of plugging into and almost in some ways building that notch between the two buildings there on the corner right and, and <laughs> i think it's trying to do a little bit of both and and yeah. um i think just kind of again at the next level of refinement kind of really understanding what that relationship is and even just sort of the gestures of the forum and what it's looking out to and you know the metal of the grove how those things you, you just described a whole bunch of sort of movements through the site and i guess i'm wondering to what extent can the how this building hits the ground become more uh, specific in shaping that. And again, I'm sure you have right. thoughts on that and that's probably more for, for future conversations, but. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's negotiating two different worlds a little bit and how the public space at the bottom can really address that is gonna be extremely important to its success. Its success. Yeah, but yeah, thank you, Good, nice project. Mm -hmm. Should we take some public comments? Sure. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. So at this time, we'd like to invite any members of the public in attendance who may wish to contribute public testimony to raise your digital hand, and I will call on you. If you're calling in by phone, press the number nine on your dial pad to activate the raise hand function and dial six to mute, unmute yourself. Please state your name and any relevant project affiliation information, and please keep comments to two minutes. So does anybody have any public testimony? Um, I see Pam Beal. You should be able to unmute, Pam. Yes, I can, and thank you very much, and good evening, everybody. Um, I think this was a wonderful presentation, and I appreciate the thoughtful comments from the com committee members. My name is Pam Beal, and I'm the chairman of the BU Community Task Force. And I would like um, you to know that the BU Community Task Force supports this project, and we hope you support this zoning envelope so that we can move this project forward and continue through the rest of the process. So thank you very much for your time tonight and your comments. And again, we hope you support it and move it out of committee. Thank you.
Thank you, Pam. Do we have anybody else who would wish to make public comment? Okay, seeing none, this concludes our public comment period. And so commissioners, do you have any additional comments at this time? I do not. I would I would uh, suggest we move this um, to full commission. Agreed. I'm here. Great. And is so, this and this fits it? This is just if you can remind me, Seth. And I apologize. Is this part of a? Are there multiple projects we're reviewing with this? So it includes the previous one, the towers. Yes. So as a. Uh, IMP or institutional master plan, they identified uh, three buildings, one of which was mm -hmm. the course and was already before uh, design committee. Um, and then the party school is the second one. The third one is a interior renovation uh, that doesn't require separate review. And so uh, by sending this uh, back uh, for final consideration and a vote of recommendation, mm -hmm. uh, there will be one more presentation that ties um, the full IMP together and would ultimately be looking to approve both the IMP and the Warren Towers project as a large project. And okay. the Part E school itself would have to come back for uh, a new filing with the agency and then would come back before the BCDC. Okay. Understood, thank you. Okay, so based on comments, um, my understanding uh, that is that the proposed project is recommended for final consideration and vote of recommendation. Uh, thank you to the proponent team. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. And please give me one minute while I invite some commissioners uh, back who... were recused from the first project. And I should have elevated everybody um, from the 500 hunting team, Huntington team. Uh, please let me know if that is not the case. Let's give it a second for Commissioner Love and Commissioner Solano to rejoin. Well, let's get going and hopefully they will join us. Uh, so for 500 Huntington Avenue and Mission Hill, this will be the third presentation of the proposed project to the design subcommittee. Uh, of the commissioners assigned to this session, uh, commissioners Evans, Lubinow, Morris, and Solano were present at the most recent BCDC design subcommittee and recommended the project for additional review in design subcommittee. Uh, these commissioners should be prepared to deliver remarks at the start of deliberation. It is my understanding that there are no commissioners present who intend to recuse themselves from the deliberations. Uh, is this correct? Okay. Thank you. And with that, I invite the proponent team to begin presenting uh, whenever you are ready. And a reminder that you will have two minutes, uh, sorry, 10 minutes. I will give you a five minute and two minute one. Already, already cut down your time there, Peter. Yeah, thank you. So looking for Don. Sorry, I did not elevate him, so I will do so right now. Hey, Don, you should be able to unmute yourself. <laughs> there, yeah, there for a second. <laughs> Locked out. <laughs> yeah, we run a tight ship here. 
So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. Um, by way of introduction, this is the 500 Huntington Project, which is uh, proposing about a 640,000 square foot life science and retail project with about over an acre of open space and pedestrian connections to the 500 Huntington site, which is the site of Sweeney Field, which many of you know is currently closed to the public and fenced off. Um, joining us tonight are our members from Enya, the design architects, and Lemon Brook, the landscape architects. And this project is jointly developed between uh, Waldwin Development. We have Clayton Turnbull from Waldwin Development on tonight, as well as Owens Companies. And we have Ed Owens Jr., president of Owens Companies on tonight as well. And myself, um, Donald Johnson from the Fallon Company. Next slide, please. Uh, just a brief kind of project design review timeline. So we started talking to the BPDA about this project back in August of 2022. Um, this will be our fourth BCDC presentation. Uh, we want to thank the BPDA for their continued feedback on this project. It's been extremely helpful in moving the project along and, and refining the design. Um, we also just want to thank the BCDC commissioners for their time spent on this project. The feedback has been extremely helpful. Um, next slide, please. So there are three main topics tonight that we're going to be covering. Um, one is the addressing the avenue of the arts guidelines and the open space, the scale and materiality of the development of the proposed project. Um, some continued podium refinement based on feedback that we, we've received. And we're gonna be discussing the pu public realm at the passage in terms of the landscape design. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Peter. Thank you. <laughs> so let's start with some of the guidelines. We just wanted to sort of re, uh, review them again. I, I think the uh, texture of the surrounding area and really up and down Huntington is very interesting. And it really is that green belt that you can see through the middle of the screen. Along that belt, there are a number of grids that transpire and I love you know, grids that go through connecting the various neighborhoods. Probably the most unique thing up and down the avenue, however, is the fact that there's all these courtyards that really become welcome mats, as we call them, to the various buildings and some of them very iconic up and down Huntington. As you can see here, some of the more iconic classical buildings, uh, Wentworth on the upper right now, with this new proposal, will have a beautiful new sort of welcome at front lawn that connects it to Huntington. There's also a very large scale buildings and towers that are up and down Huntington, and it really illustrates just what a wide variety of building scales and heights happen up and down Huntington. This is kind of zeroing in on the sort of Museum of Fine Arts, as you can see on the upper left, and then the proposal for the site and the just between that and Wentworth Hall to the lower left. Uh, these are really important just because they start to, sh again, uh, reiterate just the idea of these welcome mats and green lawns that connect the public to, the, to Huntington and really connect through the various neighborhoods onto the Fenway. The guidelines, and this is directly from the guidelines as a review, emphasize really lively retail, which we're showing in our proposal. There's a wide variety of building uh, materials, scales, uh, and sort of textures up and down Huntington and additional to the classical. Our proposal is, is really drawing from some of the historic buildings in the neighborhood, particularly sort of the green copper uh, that you can see among some of the more classical buildings and also the, the Stuart Gardner uh, in the lower right. We're also looking to sort of a trabeated system or a frame system that really reflects some of the more classical buildings and the superimposition of frame on, for instance, on a, the piers of the Wentworth building in the middle. And then as sort of a zeroing in on so what we're proposing is our uh, fenestration system. The, the materials on the right reflect some of the uh, finishes that are available in, in the metal kind of curved uh, Highlasters listed uh, or re referenced on the left. In addition to that, you can see that there's various soffits throughout, and you can see that sort of a hint of a copper soffit, and that's become even more important as we start to go through the latest revisions to the podium. Some of you did not go through the, the massing last time, and so we wanted to get back to the sort of the beginning of really how we arrived at the bulk. Uh, really, it's a, quite a large floor plate if you were to put it all in one building and really not also desirable for life science. It becomes too big a floor plate. So we immediately thought of it as a two building scenario on the upper right. 
on the lower left, then you can start to see the building started to create a difference of height to really re to sort of nestle into the sort of surrounding area, but also reflect, and you can see in yellow, some of the frontal conditions along Huntington, which now start to frame the public space in front at the corner of Ruggles and Huntington. The, the towers of what I call jostle back and forth a little bit, very dynamic because this building is seen kind of in the round from all sides. And the, the movement really is all about the connectivity to the um, northeastern building uh, to the south of the site that really has a quad that um, is very much now connected through these two buildings to the MFA. And then one of the proposals we came in last uh, week is really discovering perhaps another and really re um, emphasizing another datum that reflects some of the four stories buildings up and down Huntington as well as Ruggles. And Peter, you're at about half time. Okay, thank you. So why don't we just look at the re, um, some of the um, variations that we've arrived at. This is the Huntington facade. And right now that is a retail frontage all along Huntington. And our proposal then is to take that datum that we just discussed and wrap it and connect it to and really finding a way of um, finding a kind of really just another soffit level that really in cornice level that sort of blends into the surrounding neighborhood. Also bringing in the copper along the soffit and down, it starts to frame uh, the, the plaza and references the plaza to the right. And in the next slide, you can start to see where um, this is what exists. And then we did the same thing on Ruggles now, so that these two sort of L-shaped soffits and sort of bends in the building start to reflect, as you can see, the neighborhood, but also the, um, sorry, you can reflect the neighborhood as well as the, some of the datums. Uh, and then again, this is the sort of shop and compare, sort of the way you started on the left. We start in the middle, start to have the Ruggles datum and then and sort of the cornice. And then on the right, you can start to see the Huntington above and below. So I think the, the below is, is the current proposal in terms of referencing sort of the smaller scale to the neighborhood. And then also that you can start to see the various soffits above it. It's for the mid and then larger scale. One thing that we heard also was the retail. Um, that maybe there's a way of, of dividing it up. This would be along Huntington and along Ruggles. Uh, to the left is continuous. To the right, we're starting to frame it uh, every so often and really kind of on about a nine, 10 foot sort of grid that would allow you to move through there. Christian? Yep. Oh, thanks, Peter. Um, so last time we heard uh, a couple points from the public realm. So one was um, a pillowing of the, the park space, uh, the large social lawn. So in the appendix, we addressed that, but in today's presentation slides, it's mainly to address some of the dimensioning, dimensioning and, and um, how we enter and widen and loosen up the geometry of the passageway. So on the next slide, please. So on the left, you can see where, where we were last time we presented. And on the right, you can see where we started to um, you know, widen the entries to the passageway on both ends. Um, I think the other the other thing was adding more seating. So it wasn't just the the pockets of seating that you see in the gray areas, but that there is a place to be all along those edges. So it, it creates flexibility depending on the time of day, time of year, and things like that to occupy the space. And especially at the passageway entries to the office space, I think we really loosened up that geometry. Uh, to kind of, you know, steer people to the entries and through the space, you know, as well as on either ends. So next slide, please. So here we're looking from Northeastern into the passageway on the top is where we were last time. On the bottom is what we're proposing now. So increasing the seating, opening it up, loosening up some of the geometry. And Christian, and, a little less than two minutes. Yep, we've got one more slide. We're going to beat it. <laughs> and here we are in the middle of the passageway. So you're standing here and we're at the center and to the left and right are the entries, uh, passageway entries to the office space. And you can see the additional seating and, and um, you know, again, loosening up the geometry and widening the passageway itself. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the presentation.
Thank you, proponent team. And I do want to recognize that Commissioner Mimi Love joined us just as the team was getting started with their presentation. So um, she should be able to uh, uh, participate. Yeah, thanks, Seth. I saw all of it. And commissioners, please feel free to dive in. Um, I'll, I'll jump in. Thank you for your presentation. I um, was at the last present, um, the last presentation or the last committee meeting, and um, I think we had. My sense was that there is agreement that the the moves in terms of public access on the ground plane made sense. Uh, I asked the question, you know, what makes this building, you know, a building of the Avenue of the Arts? And actually, as you were presenting, I was also looking through the design guidelines, which looks like they date from 2015. Um, we are seeing a lot of bio um, tech building development across the city of Boston. Uh, you know, they from my perspective, they all look very similar. Um, the choice of materials, the large floor plates, um, and I just wrestling with a little bit of, I, I guess a question I have in looking through the guidelines, it refers to the Avenue of the Arts as being distinguished by kind of a variety of buildings, some of which are background or fabric buildings, some of which are special. So I'm curious, you know, you you very clearly articulated your choice of materials. I'm, I'm curious to just take it a step larger in scale and would like to hear from you your approach to the architecture of the building above and beyond kind of meeting the you know retail on the ground floor and the materials you know how is this a background building in your opinion or is it a special building um, and then the other um, question or observation I have I've just been again kind of doing this very quickly looking through the the guidelines, it looks like there is a, a different proposal for that site in the guidelines. I don't know, Seth, if you can, you or the proponent team can provide some insight. I'm just trying to look at sort of what shows up in the 2015 document versus what is here in terms of the massing and the layout of the site. Peter, why don't you go ahead and answer the first question? Sure, I think that the, again, the, uh up and down Huntington and the, and the Avenue of the Arts, there is a, quite a bit of different, differentiation of scale and material. And I would say that this building is really a connective building. It's really about um, framing a new public plaza that does our public park now that connects the MFA to Wentworth. Is it a background building? Is it an iconic building or is it a foreground building? I would suggest the size is such that it's not gonna be something you don't notice. It's really gonna be about re reinforcing the various sort of datums and really trying to break it down in scale to anticipate probably the next wave of buildings up and down the avenue of the arts, which are likely to be a bigger. So it's it, it also reflects a very flexible program. Uh, when you get into particularly life science buildings um, that are um, really there, they, in this day and age, they really anticipate a very flexible program that can really accommodate the tenants' needs as they start to rent the building and occupy the building. Really, the, the, the pressures on it are really at the public space where we have as much retail as possible and there really is much beautiful landscape that really engages the community. So it becomes a place, I think, more than a, more than a building. And I can kind of follow up with what Peter was talking about in terms of the Avenue of the Arts guidelines, what was proposed on that site. And I think that, you know, dating back to 2013, there was a proposal for this site that kind of contemplated a, a single tower with a smaller 78,000 square foot building at the corner of Huntington and Ruggles. That 78,000 square foot building was originally slated to be an academic building for Wentworth. Wentworth has since that time built all of that square footage on their campus proper and they no longer need that space. Um, so, you know, in, in looking at a proposal for this mm -hmm. site, we were looking at life science um, to kind of, you know, building for the future of, of what may become in, in the Boston market. And the, mm -hmm. the floor plates that, that were contemplated in the Avenue of the Arts guidelines did not give the sort of flexibility or feasibility um, in terms of usability for the size of a life science floor plate. Um, once we kind of dug deeper into the design, we realized that the the amount of space that was allotted for mechanicals and cores and things like that was actually much smaller than what was actually needed. And then furthering on that, Wentworth had expressed a very strong desire to have presence on Huntington Avenue. 
And so we were balancing the constraints of how do we maintain the Huntington Avenue street wall while at the same time giving Wentworth presence by having carving out this sort of open space, publicly accessible open space in front of the buildings that then allows you to visually access Wentworth Hall from Huntington, um, which is something that is um, emphasized in their latest IMP um, that they're currently going through planning for. And then, mm -hmm. and then lastly, I think that the sort of overall massing was really, we're trying to push it as far back to Parker as possible to really reduce and minimize the shadow impacts onto the Emerald Necklace and the MFA and Huntington Avenue. Um, so, so a lot of different constraints kind of combined to get us to where we are today. And what are the buildings that back on, what are the, you, you've, you've made the argument for pushing the building back, then what are the buildings, what are the uses and the ownership of the buildings behind the proposed one? Behind, the, they are Northeastern and it's the West Village Common, so they're dormitories. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll let my colleagues weigh in. And if I could, if I could add to that, Commissioner, this is Clayton Turnbull, and I'm not an architect, so I'm not going to pretend to be one. But uh, in our conversations with the community and other organizations that we met with, and I love the building, and every time it changes, it, it just gets much more attractive. But I think what the design and the layout does for us, it gives us an opportunity to also liven up Huntington Avenue. When I say living up, I mean people living it up. So if you go down Huntington Avenue growing up here and you see what it is today, it, it's, it, it, I think this building, we're hoping that this plaza will bring some energy in celebrating the, the, uh, the arts of the avenue and what it has uh, with the people that's on it and the people that, not just the students, but everybody from around. So we're thinking that the design will help us also do that for the, uh, for the avenue. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll chime in because I haven't. Um, I did see this um, maybe back in November. Um, and um, I think seeing the context of the guidelines is definitely helpful. Um, you know, I think this building, while it may not be, you know, what was imagined for the Avenue of the Arts in terms of a, a, a iconic art building, it, it, it definitely has presence. I would, I would argue that it is not going to be a background building. It's very much going to be an object building, just the way the Mass Art Tree House is an object building and the Northeastern. And I'm not sure this is a bad thing. I think it's actually a good thing. Um, and I was actually quite convinced with the material, you know, tying it back to, um, you know, the gardener edition with, you know, the green glass elements. I, I, I do think that they're the material choices, while not immediately apparent, are, are actually quite reflective of that area of town. So I'm not opposed to the, you know, to the, to the material choices. I do think that the last time that I was involved with the discussion, there was lots of talks of really more of tying um, that central space back to the West Village and, you know, extending um, that urban link from the MFA back to Northeastern. And it looks like some of the open space improvements have subtly and, you know, addressed that in, in a good way. And I think like the addition of the benches along the, the that path um, is a good improvement. Uh, it, they seem subtle, but I do think that they're actually going to be quite um, uh, quite important changes. Um, I personally think that the latest version looks much improved to, from my eyes uh, than the last time. And I really like those copper slits uh, with the soffits and those overhangs. I do think that that acknowledging the lower scale height by having those recess moments actually is quite an improvement for um, where we were in terms of addressing uh, the scale of the building and you know some of the challenges that we're going to have with the different heights along Huntington Avenue. Good. Those, those are my comments. I, I, I think it's yeah. it, it's you know definitely been iterative but in a good way. Yeah, I might um, 
I agree with that. I also would agree with um kind of Emery's comments. Um and the maybe the kind of just fundamental tension, a little bit of awkwardness and a building of this bulk on a site of this size. And how do we kind of uh uh acknowledge or create some, some of these contextual cues for a, a building typology that has no neighbor here, right? So I, I think that 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 creates some of the inherent difficulties. Um, I would say I agree with, I appreciate a lot of the moves that have been made to sort of carve up the massing, these sort of recesses and moments like that, I think definitely help to break the building up. Um, I do think, yeah, you just have by nature a very large glass and metal building that, you know, is at a scale of little precedent in the neighborhood, which again, isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I, again, I agree with Mimi that I think the attitude about how the uh the sort of language of the peers and the sort of sculpts of nature of them are working i think it's it's helpful um i don't know i guess i might offer has there been any consideration of between the two volumes a subtle difference in the color or something to just maybe create a little more diversity formally without without necessarily making it you know a patchwork of uh, like seven different colors but i guess i'm just wondering um I'm reacting to the just sheer bulk and size of this, right? And I'm just wondering if that has been something that has been thought of to, um, again, help help it create some diversity. It's an object building. It has different, you know, neighbors and sort of forms on each on each edge of it. I'm gonna, I wonder if that's something that can be played with. Don, how would you? Are you there? I don't see you there anymore. Yeah. So one of the things that we have discussed in previous iterations is. The, the directionality of the the vertical sort of um, fins or or um, mullion caps in terms of what that kind of brings in terms of of you know the a flattened perspective you know as, as what is what we talked about and how they can be kind mm -hmm. of alternated to kind of change whether the appearance of the surface is kind of darker or lighter as you kind of approach or retreat from it um, one of the things that we have also explored is the a different coloration um, of the podium. I don't know if Ethan, you can kind of bring one of those up kind of quickly. I was probably looking for it. <laughs> I am, hold on. Back here. Sorry to keep you jumping around here. No, no, that's a good, it's good discussion. Might have to dig that one up. Hold on. Yeah. Don, we did look at a number of colors, and I think it really is interesting in terms of, you know, whether it's a ser series of greens sort of reflecting the sort of shades of copper or mm -hmm. whether or not you, you bring in some of the earth tones that are part of the brick in the surrounding area. And we've done a number of different studies. Um, and, you know, we'd, well, I guess we're in the process of showing them to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think your rationale for the the color mm -hmm. and materials is very clear. I, I think I, I really appreciated um, Commissioner Evans' comments about it, it. The building feels bulky <laughs> to me, and you know how do you address? I, and I, I just keep coming back to it. It looks like a number of overall the architecture to me resembles the architecture of a lot of similar projects in other areas of the city so i think yeah. this is a an architectural challenge of how can you you know again what makes this of its place you know what can you to commissioner evans comments you know what can you do to further you know you've already made some very wise moves in terms of breaking down the scale of the building. Are there precedents that you can identify that provide some cues as to how you can further enable a larger, more massive building to respond to a context of, you know, which the neighbors, you know, are smaller in scale? Yeah, I think there's a lot of um, historic examples or examples at least of, buildings that are metal and glass that reside in predominantly masonry areas where if they are bigger, certainly if this were a brick building, for instance, it'd be quite a beast. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that it, you know, really bringing in the coloration in a lighter way, perhaps a way that is also uh, is, you know, you, you can't really use highly reflective glass these days. So that's a very good thing. <laughs> 
So, um, I, and I think that really the the scale of the peers um, are also very much part of the scale of the surrounding context. But it is it's a building that celebrates in a certain level where we are in the 21st century, but also is being very, I think, humble and perhaps um, really trying to engage the surrounding community with this sort of copper datum at the various levels so that it isn't singular as much as it is referencing probably a lot of the history in the neighborhood without getting into something that, I don't know, is either desperately iconic or something that is, you know, just too reactive to scale, yeah, yeah. Not reactive to the program. No, I appreciate that response. And I think that make, makes sense. And and I I agree, or I, I sort of appreciate that. I think the response is a metal and glass building. And may, maybe, again, I'm, I'm and I, I forgive me, I might have missed the meeting where this was shown, but I, seeing some of the other studies is interesting. And um, yeah, I think for me, it was just curious if that had been part of the the, the design thinking. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I do think that, that so exploring the variation of the facade treatment across the breadth of the project, I think is something that should be encouraged. And, and I certainly trust you to to push on that. And and maybe I'm just also thinking about some of you, something Mimi said, how the building meets the ground. I think the recess is, is smart, um, but maybe in that storefront zone, there could be an opportunity to think about a different texture. Maybe there is a little bit of, uh, again, I'm not trying to sort of be uh, uh, kind of a slave to the context, but something that maybe feels more solid or, or, or moments of, 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 yeah. I think that, yeah, exactly. That alternate approach, I think, is start, starting to do that. And uh, uh Picking up just some some textual differences that provide a little bit more robustness at, at, at grade, but still allowing the porosity of of a uh, of a commercial experience there. Sure, I mean I I agree that sort of you know, attention to detail at the bottom. Yeah, the the lobbies, for instance, particularly will be you know twenty four seven lobbies. They're yeah. really welcoming when you're in that passage between North. <clears throat> So really the facades of the lobby themselves becomes or the sort of the back wall of the lobby becomes that real facade. Uh, and then as at your suggestion, we did look at some of the retail fronts having more specific storefronts. So it's not a continuous retail, but is also very open to the idea of multiple smaller retails. I, I want to um, pick up on a number of different threads that uh, my colleagues have um what out tonight. Um, I think there's a lot of things here to like uh, that are that are big moves. Um, I think what you said about Wentworth and their presence on Huntington Avenue is really important. Wentworth, this is the the uh, avenue of of the arts. It's the avenue of institutions, and um, I think you've created a, a really fitting extension of their front yard uh, um, that I, I don't know I always think of maybe maybe uh, I'm very city centric but I always think of Huntington Avenue traveling west and, I, and seeing that really important facade of Wentworth and I think that's a really big important move um, I, I think I I, um, I also like um, the I think the material palette, I think the 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 um, the general simplicity of that of the building envelope is is also really very nice. Um, I do think this in in uh, two two or three different things that I'm still worried about. And one is, uh, I think that the the east building uh, is actually far more successful than the west building. Partially because its base helps define that that front yard uh, in a in a in a strong way. I mean, there's a real separation of massing of the base and the tower, where the, I don't know, the which one did I say on the east building? I mean, uh, I'm not sure if I said it as east as west, but it's the east building that I that I think is um, stronger. The west building, the the definition of the base or podium to the tower feels slight to me. Um, and, and actually the sliding of it, um, the sliding of the tower um, is is not only slight, but it slides off in a way that I think makes the, the top field even bulkier. 
And I want, and I even, I, I, a couple of things. When you showed the, uh, the alternatives on color, I was struck by that. I didn't, uh, when, when, um, uh, when Jonathan brought it up, uh, and you said, "Oh, we have some studies," I didn't expect quite to be quite as struck as I was when you put it up on the screen. I thought that was really very interesting. It's they're still clearly two very related buildings, but there's a something really nice happens between the two. <clears throat> but it also makes me wonder if if the if the West Building, the building on the right wouldn't be stronger if it didn't have the slide if it had uh, if it were more simple and the building on the left um, makes this very big massing move that <clears throat> has a very strong base um, holds Huntington defines the green space the 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 open space in front of the in front of Wentworth's classical building <clears throat> and that the building on the right, get stronger for being for being um simpler and hmm. a, a, a simple mass and a hard edge against the massing move on the left <clears throat> i i even I, and i'm probably going to take a uh, a bridge too far but <laughs> i would love to move a floor off of the building on the west and add it to the building on the right to make that distinction even a little more but i wouldn't really encourage I'm not saying precisely what you've shown in that middle uh, view, but the idea of making them clearly of a, a clearly connected, clearly of a hand, um, clearly together but different, uh, and I don't know that you have to do that in a way that's where you mix colors on the one on the right. But if the one on the left were uh, one 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 color that goes with a very big massing move and the building on the right uh, was a, another color, the green, say, uh, and it was one big massing move. Um, I think that all gets stronger. It I don't think it has to cost you any square footage. Um, I also I also have a comment on the base, which is uh, these are big buildings um, and the base feels small for the proportion mm -hmm. of the building. And I know that's really hard because you got one floor of kind of public spaces, retail, which is good, uh, your lobby, whatever else is going on there. And the second floor is going to be lab space and the most valuable lab space in the building. Um, and so how do you make that transition in and out, uh, you know, the use inside to outside expression? But boy, that feels like a lot of weight on that base. It feels like a lot of mass on that base. And I, I'm worried about that. Um, um, let me see. I had one, oh, one other comment was I, I did not um, attend the last subcommittee. I was the, here for, I think, the full commission. Um, and we talked a lot at the full commission about alignment with the, the, uh, with, um, Northeastern's West Village uh, Gateway. And um, I still wish there could be more there to make that. I think that archway is so important. Uh, I think the connection is so important. And the misalignment is, um, I, I, I want to believe that it's solvable in a more positive way than simply sliding to the side of the space between uh, and and I, I suspect that's got something to do with the size of your floor plates and the desire to make them <clears throat> of a certain minimal size but I just I wonder if that if the building on the right west building um, couldn't adjust a little bit in order to make that more axial I, I think all of the I, I hope all of the things I'm saying are not I don't think they're I don't think they're about overall the overall square footage on the side or the amount of open space uh, or even the expression of the buildings. Uh, but I, I think that this um, uh, I think this I, I think it's a very good proposal. I think it can be better. I, I like your suggestion about considering the, the the massing of the building on the right, just at David, as you were speaking, 
I couldn't help but think the whole idea of pushing the, the upper mass. So I agree that the buildings feel heavy, that giving the base some height, for lack of a better term, you know, and again, there, there are ways, there's certainly creative ways. I think you can do it within the framework of your design approach. Um, but it does feel like pushing, I, I, I think if you were to maybe redistribute the bulk a little bit in the way David suggested would help to alleviate some of the heaviness and, and maybe increase the potential elegance of this proposal right now, that upper mass that feels shifted to the right. I almost want to push it the other way because it feels it's like it's, it's it, that, that then would help, you know, with so many of these projects, we find we, we make comments about how do we think of this as an ensemble? So you have the remarkable opportunity to create a substantial new building on the Avenue of the Arts. So just how can it feel, how can you use this opportunity to create something that feels connected, um, that the, the buildings within the site feel connected to each other, but then also have some, some thread of connection to the surrounding neighborhood. And you know, I, I, I kind of want to go back to the context images because I think of this area as being generally kind of one height, you know, and then, and then there are these higher, taller structures. So is there a way that you can make a connection within the design of the facade and think about the texture and the, you know, the detailing of the facade that again, remain, you remain true to your approach to the design, to the materials, to the colors, but just even those arrows, you know, those arrows suggest, yeah, that, that kind of the cornice line. So can you just take that, you know, further in terms of your, um, you know, as you develop the design? So both sort of revisiting the massing without sacrificing the square footage of the building, but then also just take another kind of level of analysis to your facade design that makes a stronger connection because right now I think it's too subtle. It, it, when I look at the building as a whole, that, that, that attention, that, that design move you're making is not evident to me because the, the overall bulk of the building and the overall verticality of the building and simplicity of the facade overrides those smaller design moves. Can, can I ask a question about the base and the shift just to further entertain this idea of, you know, not having that stagger. Is there, would it be possible to keep the upper volume where it is and slide the base out? And the only reason I ask that is because I do worry that if we stack the base and the upper part and reduce the width between the two buildings, that it becomes a challenge for that interior space in my mind. Do yeah, you yeah. want me to comment on that or is Yes, yeah. of course. We, we did look long and deep at that. And yes, uh, Mimi, you are on the right um, direction is that we tried to get as much light and air into that passage as possible. And the lower volume really is uh, up against already the, what the, that Ruggles setback that's about 40 feet up and down Ruggles. So if you were to shift it over, that wouldn't be possible. You could shift the upper tower in, but then that would be the expense of the of the air and the uh, the light in the passage. Um, personally, I you know I, I I think pushing back a little bit, I, I think that sort of there's a certain language in this building in the round. Um, I think the cornices are uh, and the sort of copper soffits that are throughout really do give you different soffit levels that really are very much a part of the neighborhood. Um, the idea of the perhaps top volume, David, um, something that's a little lighter, I think also could alleviate and sort of make it sort of levity mm -hmm. in the way you sort of read it as, I think, and I like the word Anne-Marie mm -hmm. Ensemble. I think that it is very much a campus of parts and uh, it's also a campus of parts that is very reflection, is very reflective of a very flexible program which I think is really a mandate of this kind of typology. Ethan, do you have any of those podium, those other podium studies that we looked at? Uh, yep, hold on.
and even not what I like about this particular image is up there is without that the soffit being green, you know, is a big actually it's it's subtle, but it it's not so subtle actually. It makes it's a huge difference in the sense that it really will it, it, the the material that we're thinking of is is going to be very um, kind of metallic and really will be something you see. Uh, this was uh, kind of a loggia that would be kind of at, uh, in, in lieu of what we had very symmetrical to that particular sort of arm that goes out along the uh, Huntington. Um, these were the beginning of, and we did like this idea of cutting into the building. The building kind of has a series of tangents that sort of spin away and in a kind of a dynamic way. So as you move around the building, it isn't um, so static, really, that it's constantly in motion. And this one was the beginning of that. And I think we've actually improved on it uh, since then. And this was, uh, as you can see, just changing the color in a way that seemed to sort of not necessarily let the, the gravity of the building come down in the way that made sense in the other schemes. But again, I think the coloration of the building, particularly if as an ensemble, it's all one color and maybe the, the cube at the top which to me is iconic and it's sort of cubeness. Uh, maybe that one is a lighter color to kind of um, move towards the sky, for instance. I think with these, what's also being explored kind of simultaneously in these studies was also a, a smaller percentage of glass and a higher percentage of variability on the coloration. Yeah, that, as you can see, it was sort of a random thing going on. So is the, in these, I, these, I, th I think these studies are very interesting. Um, um, and is there, is there something also going on? Are you, are you um, exploring the, the width of the, the solid, the pier? Uh, and uh, is it changing as you go up the building? Or is it, or is it the same up the building? No, we did not look at that. It would be the, this is just simply a wider pier everywhere, um, which from the inside is, um, it just made the building heavier from the outside and from the inside. Yeah. I, I, well, uh, I, I, I think, I think there's some very interesting ideas in, in all of this. I appreciate your showing it to us. Um, I, the the definition of the entry, um, I think that was what we were looking at a moment ago that had that vertical element of glass. Yeah, that one. And then how it locked in, the, how you change color and that kind of locked in the, 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 the carve out that you made there. Uh, I think that's all adding um, and I, texture to it that helps. Uh, and I'm I, I'm not saying that's the solution. I'm saying that there's moves there that are very interesting, um, that that um, don't affect the total yield. That don't affect. Um, I think you're probably right about the dimension of the piers being narrower is better, light, and hopefully a little bit lighter. Um, uh, and one of the comments I was going to make and didn't make was. I, I in a in two very big buildings, I it's a it's a little hard to find the front doors. And boy, now I know where the front door is, uh, and I think that's a very positive thing. Well, I mean, here on the right, I mean that isn't the front door, which is one of the <laughs> problems with it. Okay, <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> yeah, the front doors are actually at the passage in the plaza. And this ah, okay. I miss that. Giving, giving way to you know retail along Huntington, which is much. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So this one is titled "Preferred Scheme." Is this the most recent scheme that you presented tonight? No, oh, that's okay. A while ago. <laughs> okay, <laughs> preferred a while ago. Okay, yeah. got it. No, I think it, even if you go back to the sort of the three that you had from the very beginning. Um, I guess it's the prison. You had the one with the bronze, yeah, yeah. slit, yeah. It, along the top was the previous design, and then the alternate approach, which is now the preferred approach, along the bottom. And I think we're still open to you know that the 
coloration differences relative to the various fundamental shapes, the cubes, for instance, or the podium. Each building is two fundamental parts, so to speak. You know, the real problem is when you start to do some of the coloration that looked a little yeah. cool to me is that, it, you know, where do you stop and start? It ended up being kind of a nightmare. It's easier to do it as fundamental parts, you know, the podium and then mm -hmm. the, uh, the form on top, the secondary form on top. I think the thing I'm struggling with is really trying to figure out that center space and that shift. Is that, sh it, I don't know this for a fact, but that shift kind of contributes to that of realignment that we're trying to make with West Village, the archway, right? Because it's yeah. further over and you're set at the base. And so this is, I think, the problem you have, right? You're trying to figure out how to do both. Well, there's a casual connection between the parts. Mm -hmm. I mean, the one thing I would, you know, I don't know if you've actually gone from Northeastern into the archway that's connecting. You don't approach it. You don't approach that axially. Mm -hmm. So this notion of really fundamentally, mm -hmm. you know, addressing all these axial conditions um, in a kind of a classical alignment, you know, that... It's really more experiential, uh, which I think as you look at some of the Christian's work in the plaza, it gets back to some of the things that Laura was talking about in the plaza, that there's a, a experiential quality of moving through it. We actually did a video of it, if you want to see it. I mean, it was actually quite informative. Some of you saw it, some of you didn't. But, uh, you know, coming through Northeastern into the into the portal, you're you're, you're coming in already at an angle, and then as you move through it, your eye moves towards the east as you move through it, and then there's kind of a little place there, and you know, here we go. So this is um, within Northeastern itself. I hope it's not too blurry for you, but as you can see, it really helps you understand how it's sort of a string of events rather than kind of this um, Uffizi connection between two points. But here you can start to see some of the, the, the pausing along the way, cross access to doorways, um, really the how the lobbies really open up the space, that copper datum moves through there. And then as you come into the main, your major plaza with sculpture, and there's a lot more trees here, obviously. I think it'll play that again. Through. I know, I know I'm biased, but that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think one Could of the you things play that, that the video again. Yeah, please. Yeah. I think one of the things that the the animation shows is just the kind of, I think, emphasizing Peter Peter's point about the meandering nature. And, and I think that what's really great about walking around in this neighborhood is that it's not, you know, a, a strict kind of grid where everything lines up perfectly and kind of introducing these little bumps and shifts here and there, I think is very, very much in keeping with with what's in the existing context. And, and to that point, Don, really, even the two entrances are not necessarily symmetrical. There's always kind of a, an issue of balance, but I don't think that we get involved in trying to be overly stiff and symmetrical. Yeah, I mean, even you allows know, so, the more classical buildings to really shine, in my opinion. Yeah, even so if I could interrupt there. for a minute, could could you pull back? Could you back up the video? I just there's something um, I wanted to see. Could we see the video where? Yeah, go. That's actually yes. Keep going. So one of the things I'm noticing is the height of where you have the reveal here versus the height, if you keep going to the existing Northeastern building. So see how the height of that opening, and I realize it's a passageway and you're passing underneath, but it's three, three, four stories tall. So just, just thinking in terms of how you create a sense of continuity within the space, so it's not about creating the same architecture or using the same materials, but it it just my instinct would be, particularly as you're moving from mm -hmm. the campus onto Avenue of the Arts, you know, could you could you raise that edge that we see here in your building so it is comparable to the passageway beyond? 
and I, I think I'm just building upon the comments from my colleagues about it just seeing that that ground floor, that lower area seems a little low. So it's not about increasing the amount of retail, but can you just bring, do something with the architecture so that there's more of a, some continuity between the two? Commissioner, what, what I will give you some feedback on, because uh, I walk that area often, is that Northeastern archway is very, very narrow. So it's really not an, and I'm not trying to step on it. Somebody might be the architect that did that on this call, but it's just a very narrow hallway. Uh, not one that we're replicating when you turn around. When he, uh, when Peter took the, did the video from Northeastern coming out to us, when you come into this space from the video, we're gonna be a lot more opened of a, of a walkway, more inviting to light and natural softness from the plants and what have you. That that archway on a neat northeast and going into the Ashilman Hall, which is really where you're going towards Ruggles, that's really much more narrow than the video shows um, as far I, as- I agree. And, I, and I've been through, I have been through it. So I'm not at all, I'm not proposing that you replicate it. It was just a subtle, you know, as I was just responding or continuing the conversation about the facade of the building and, yeah. you know, responding to the context. So I'm not at all proposing that you make it narrower. Um, and I agree that the experience will be different and that's to be celebrated. It was just, uh, you know, continuing the dialogue about how you think about the facade of the building. Yeah, sure. And providing sure. a little bit of variety. Yeah, no, no, no. I was just because I'm listening, right? I'm learning a lot on the call. I'm not an architect. I, I, I don't profess to be one. So I'm listening from a, a consumer, public walking person, thinking about it as I hear things. So it's uh, uh, respectfully mm -hmm. that's how I'm thinking. But yeah, and thank that's you. Important. Thank you. And, and also in terms of those datums on the northeastern portal, that's a four story, about a, probably around a ten foot. Our first two floors are 20 feet, so that soffit probably lands around the same spot. But it does respect that datum of the portal coming through. So maybe the video isn't doing justice to the height of that space, but it's a really tall piece of glass. I was just going to ask you that, Ethan, because it is four stories of residential versus two stories of 20 foot floor to floor, which reflects the requirements for the loading dock. And I would also offer there's when you get within that area, there's a number of different datums as well, which is, I think, part of the importance of it is that there's a casualness to it, but there's also a, a different sort of measuring points as you move through it. And it gives it a kind of compression and expansion. Yeah, we're, we aren't trying to absolutely create a tunnel through the passage to create, to connect to another tunnel as much as create a series of events along this path. Commissioners, any further comments at this moment, or should we pause for public comment? Um, I'd like to talk about the landscape. Please. So, if we could, if we could go to a site plan. Is that the latest site plan? This yeah. was the one that was a direct no. reflection no. of some of. Okay. Okay, got it. So I think the strength of the landscape is the variety of spaces and also the passage between the buildings has, has really become about body movement, which I think is, is so strong. It allows the buildings to have their orthogonal relationship but what happens on the ground kind of pushes you through the space, I think, in kind of a, the way that people walk. Um, and I think the other space, you know, has been developing all along, and I think that's, that's good. A space we haven't really talked about is the space where the sculpture is. Basically, as you come through the corridor, um, heading north, that area, what is the scale of that area? What is the dimensions? And I'm I'm asking because it's a big space, mm -hmm. and I wonder about the exposure of it relative to human comfort, and whether or not you should think about 
I mean, I love the urbane nature of that space, um, but I also am concerned about the the heat island effect and wondering if you've done studies about the shadows in that area and if you have any of that that you could share. Well, I mean, I, can, I, yeah, I mean, in terms of dimension, I mean, it's, yeah, it's about 120, 150 feet each way. Um, it's responding a little bit to the avenue, the guidelines of the, the, the welcome mat, sort of a more open piece within this public realm, a plaza that has a little more flexibility in programming. The art piece, the dot, you know, the destination piece is, you know, very admittingly um, not developed at this point. You know, um, it, it, you know, we've talked a lot about a fountain, maybe integrate sculpture and so forth. So whether that would grow bigger, smaller and so forth. But in, and so addressing the heat out of that, we I think we've had past plans where we've had more trees come um, along Huntington there. And I think there's been varying viewpoints of visibility, um, you know, into the space. So, um, but we, we've intentionally left this place, you know, a plaza space within the park. And Ethan can bring up some of the, the shadow studies to see how, um, you know, it gets great afternoon sun. Uh, other parts yeah, today will have shade. So we have shadow study somewhere, but this was daylight analysis to show that if you were to put a, a in a yearly analysis, a, an open space, it's about. Do, do you have uh, shadow studies? Are you saying these are not shadow studies? It's a daylight study, so it's like the inverse of the shadow. Got it. Got it. Um, and you think you these know, come out a little bit comparison to well, the previous? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, originally, we prepared these because the concern would be that we were creating open space that was going to be in shadow and, and yep. in comparison to the previous scheme. Yep. So that's the comparison yep. we're looking at. The scale of the space, I think, is right. I do. I'm not suggesting that it's smaller, particularly as it's um, as it's you know on Huntington Avenue. I think that's that's right. What I'm concerned about is just what it's like to be in that space throughout the day, and whether or not people are really going to occupy it. Because I think with the space that's that large, you want out occupancy. Otherwise, it looks pretty lonely and. I don't think you want that either, right? The idea is that you've made this great corridor, it spills out into this space, and I think you want to keep it, keep it that way. And so, you know, I'm wondering whether or not if we could go back to the site, the current site plan. You know, would it would it help? Um, do you mind zooming into that, and then I will. Uh... Oh, thank you. So I'm wondering whether or not even a row of trees that here um, might help that to give sort of respite at the at particular times of day, or whether or not extending these further down would kind of help with that overlap in those spaces. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Christian, I don't really know what the solution is, but I, I think I think that you should think about the occupancy of that space and maybe look back at the sun shadow studies to see whether or not anything can be done. I mean, the other alternative is something really simple, which is to put up umbrellas, right? And therefore you, you know, you let people have um, their own shade. But the the only thing about that is that it's temporary. Will that be kept up over time, right? Right, yeah, yeah that's so, gonna be different, yeah, right. Um, yeah, no, we, sh we should study it. I think, I think that, I think it deserves something, you know? Um, is, is this something I mean, that, 
Again, I'm just devil's advocate to a degree. This is a, for a campus. And if I think of a lot of campus, that sort of area in the middle of a campus that people can gather, do you think that would be a welcoming position on this? Because it really is. Oh, I, I don't doubt about it, but with, whether or not it's a place that people want to occupy in the middle of the day is something important, right? It's not enough to just make the space for people. It has to be a place that people want to come and stay at, right? Whereas, you know, you've made these spaces, which are just so lovely, and you know that they're probably going to be occupied as, play, as perches, right, both for the street and for the interior spaces. Um, I can't answer this as much as I would really love to see not daylight studies, but shadow studies, because that really is the indicator of comfort, of temperature, of heat island effect. Mm -hmm. I think we can bring up a shadow study. Yeah, hold on. That would be great. I mean, the amazing thing about this particular scheme, from my point of view, is, and I know you've struggled with it as a landscape architect, is that there's actually dirt under this plaza. <laughs> You're not you're not a planter, so there there are nice opportunities here for real trees. Peter, oh, weren't no, we also, no, no, I'm. Peter, weren't we also having some seasonal changes to the plaza also? And yeah, because I think a lot of a lot of what makes someone want to come and sit out anywhere or be anywhere is also the environment that you create, and not just with buildings. But I think I remember also from previous presentations, we actually displayed the thoughts of not only uh, having some art displays of different artists uh, on that plaza, but also changing it seasonally with uh, from the winter to the summer to, to the spring to the summer. Am I correct? Am I just yeah, no? Quick, quick. No, I gave that whole presentation. Yeah, no, that that's very true. So part of it will help so, to see the shadow studies. Like there's times of year where yeah. there's, there's more shade than you might want there. I think we've been relying a lot on what the centerpiece will be in terms of a fountain or, or sculpture, which is not defined at this point to you know, be this active piece in, in the space. And then through a lot of this urban realm or public realm circulation, there's a lot of ways to move through that space. So we've you know, left it uh, you know, more open intentionally, but I think um, in terms of, of, of comfort and heat, so we, we we need to balance that with, you know, maybe more specifically with the shadow studies here. I mean, our cities are only becoming hotter and hotter. Um, mm -hmm. And so there's, you know, there's a lot of emphasis on thinking about this. And I don't know who's controlling that. Is that you, Ethan? Could yeah. you zoom into the plaza and go through those and maybe slow down the pace a little bit and tell me, um, like to see the time. It's hard to zoom that and see these the are time. Showing. time. Yeah, I know. That's why I was. <laughs> Is that close I enough? I knew you'd master it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay, so we're spring. We're at spring in the morning. Yeah. Oh. Could you? Could you? You probably can see it. So would you? That's spring in the afternoon. Yeah, Ethan. If you could narrate the times as you click through it. Hurt. This is summer, 9 a.m.? Yep. 12 p.m. in June? Yep. 3 p.m. June? Yep. 6 p.m. June? 9 a.m. September? June, September? 3 p.m. September? 6 p.m. September? 9 a.m. December, noon December, 3 p.m. December. Yeah, it's it's interesting that that space is actually pretty sunny mm -hmm. um, in the afternoons in all seasons. And so I think, you know, I think you, it, it's starting at noon. And I think that you should go back and think about that and think about how we could ameliorate that um it's you know it's i i understand there's there's still a lot of time 
and development, you know, the development of the design in here. But I, I think that's an important aspect that you should should look at. Mm-hmm. Um, I I just think that space should be occupied as much as it can be because as you're looking down that corridor, right, you want to see people in there. You want to see people moving around. It's one of the draws as it goes through. And in fact, I noticed this even more in the film that you kind of get to that space and, you know, you're kind of pushed out, um, you know, pushed out into an area that that is so much more harsh than either of the other spaces. And again, as I said, I really like how urbane it is. I just think you need to look at how people can occupy that space. Okay. Yeah, Laura, Laura, I think it's a trade-off <laughs> of the... Sorry, go ahead. No, you go. I was just going to say, I think it's a trade-off of us trying to respect so many different alignments, particularly the crosswalk to the MBTA on Huntington there, and trying to keep you know really open, clear yep. connections versus the trade-off yep. of putting more shade in there. But I... I hear what you're saying, and I kind of get where you want to move the trees or add more shade to that area. So it makes sense. It's yeah. Just, you know, where is the center spine of that, and what is the focal point that you want to see? And then again, to the occupancy side of that, how do you want to occupy that space? Right. Right. Exactly. And um, the other thing is, is that it's not absolutely necessary that this lines up here. You know, I think that it it doesn't have to be a target at the end, which might make some room for a row of trees that might help that passage. So I'm not suggesting any changes to this whatsoever. I think that's really successful, and um, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it. But I'm just wondering about whether or not another row of trees, just the way you have these double rows on the outside. Just a single row of trees might actually help with that connection, defining that connection. I don't know. Look at it. I think it's worth it. And I think it's, I mean, we might even explore the, the option of maybe we don't need, like you said, maybe we don't need the art there, you know. Hmm. Or can it be asymmetrical? And that actually might make it an even more interesting space. Say that again. So, I'll I'll leave it in your hands, but <laughs> I believe Laura, you said asymmetrical, right? Yeah. It could be. Yes, it could be. It doesn't have to be so symmetrical and lined up with the path because you you know, someone was talking about sort of the classical, you know, how stiff classical movements can be. And and that's you know, that's not how people not how landscapes work these days, right? They're body, they're body responsive. So you can turn your head. <laughs> uh, it's it, it just we, you know, how big is that area? I just wanted to. I mean, I, I admired your first statement, which is the scale of it seems right relative to the various spaces around. I mean, it's much smaller than the. The vestibule, of, so to speak, of Wentworth. It's certainly much smaller than the MFA. Um, I, I, you know, as this, I'm thinking, I got to. You forgive me all from Boston, but you know, it's about the Washington Square has this big fountain in the middle of it, and it's about that that sort of paved area is about ninety yep. feet in diameter, and I think that that's kind of what we're talking here. Yep. So, you know, it does have maybe just additional trees to reinforce this as the center would make some sense. Can we, can I yeah. uh, beg everyone's indulgence and jump back to architecture for a minute because it's killing me? <laughs> Ethan, could you pull up the cross section through the passageway, please? As we're talking about building shifts and moving and what all our constraints are. Can you just pull up that section that yeah, can you blow that up a little? So one of the things we've struggled with and gone back and forth multiple times um, 
are those shifts? And, and as you can see on this one, the West building, which is the one on the left, has that 40 foot constraint, which is why the building shifted out. And the main reason for that was numerous discussions that we had with the BPDA, but also BCDC on some of the early um, discussions about what the right width of that was in the air and light going into that space. Personally, I don't have any problem shifting that building 10 feet to the right towards the east, because for me, that's wider than multiple, uh, or it's the width of a street right now, if not wider than several in many parts of our dear city. Um, and I don't think that would be a, a huge imposition on that space, given its vast width at the ground, um, but also plenty of light. I mean, the, the light is already impacted by the first section, the lower podium piece that is already going to the east. So if you flip this around and slid that back as a more simple tower, as I think a couple of the commissioners said, I don't think we'd have an issue with that. I think that, but again, this is a trade-off of what are the towers doing? What is that impact to the passageway? And is it a better result overall shifting of the tower? Which hearing the comment, I actually think it is. So I'll just, I'll just throw that out to the three or four commissioners that were talking about the architecture of the building and, and you know, things we can do. We can't, obviously we can't shift the base, uh, as Peter was saying earlier, out. We're constrained by that 40 fits setback on Ruggles. So maybe we'll go to the front one again. Uh, Go to the ones from the front, Ethan, just so we can flip back to what we were talking about. Yeah, actually the bigger one. Yeah, uh, yeah. thank you. When we were looking at talking about the tower. So Richard, I'm, conf I'm, uh, I'm not sure I completely followed you. You're suggesting you have no problem if you shift which volume? The west, the top of the west tower to the left, David. Towards the east. Top of the west to the left. The one yeah. on the right. I, we can't go the other way. You're right. right. No, I understand that. Yeah. So, so. The, so that the, the passageway at the top, would would that be 40 feet building to building? 50. No, it would, it would be, I'm so, uh, yeah, it would be, yeah, be 40. 40. 40. Yeah, it would be 40. Yeah, it gets pretty tight. It's five times anything in New York. <laughs> <laughs> It would be, a, I think the proposal also was to have that tower be more singular, I think. Um, well, that's what I was trying to get to. Yeah. If you did that. Yeah. It certainly, you know, is it, does the scale get bigger or does it more of an assemblage? I think that that would be the trade-off. Yeah, I mean, it's tough with the uh, volume. We've got, we've done the up and down, right? We transferred from the east to the west. Right. Um, couple of times we're trying to retain square footage obviously um and as we try to simplify i mean i think the only other move if we wanted to make it would be to bring the lower podium base forward in this view um which would be similar to the podium on the left but um it's just how much that encroaches on that view from the from wentworth hall across to the plaza and what that how that connection relates Talk about that kind of axial connection out of the yeah exactly. Uh, I mean, just yeah. again backing up to thirty thousand feet and looking at those parts and pieces. Um, I think there's only a couple moves. I guess that's where I'm going. It's like something's got to give. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And we keep moving the Rubik's cubes around, um, but they can all. We can't respect everything, right? So we got to work within the guidelines. Um, I I so wonder if this work is within the context. Sorry, go ahead, Amory. Oh, no, no, I, I understand you're, you're eager to, to come up with a solution so you can move ahead. Um, but I wonder if this is a case where it, you know, your team goes back and, you know, takes into consideration our comments and, and see what scenarios arise. It really helped me to see some of the, the details in terms of looking at the facades, you know, with the variation. So it's, um, and I, I just, that, that would be my instinct. I'm curious to hear from my colleagues, but just to maybe, you know, 
go back to the drawing board, so to speak, with these comments in mind and see what what answer what what that reveals. No, I appreciate that. I guess sorry, I'll let the commissioner speak, but I guess what I'm trying to get to is there's got to be a trade-off at some point. So there are people that are asking for different things. This is probably our, you know, we've been through a lot of design review with a lot of different people on the subcommittee. It's changed and shifted, which is obviously a challenge with people in and out, but that's the, the nature of the beast. Um, and I was just trying to get to the higher goals of the avenue of the arts, the neighborhood, the context, all those things that you guys are referring to, that's all. So I'm not trying to design on this call or solve it. I just wanted to get feedback, so I appreciate it. And if we could review what really the comments are, I think that would be helpful in terms of, is there consensus or is, is it, you know, how does, how does, it, I'm curious right now in terms of how one proceeds from this conversation. I think we should proceed to public comment and think about it <laughs> and come back to it. Agreed. <laughs> Very artful, Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so at this time, we'd like to invite any members of the public in attendance who may wish to contribute public testimony to raise your digital hand, and I will call on you. If you are calling in by phone, press the number nine on your dial pad to activate the raise hand function and dial six to mute, unmute yourself. Please state your name and any relevant project affiliation information. Please keep comments to two minutes. Um, and I see Allison Plutinus. You should be able to unmute yourself. Thank you. Um, what I didn't see in this presentation was um, the Parker Street side. And um, to me, that's an important side of the building because uh, historically, Parker Street, uh, one of Roxbury's oldest streets, and there is a... Um, long view uh, when you're at Huntington and Parker looking towards Mission Hill where you see uh, a church steeple uh, in the distance, but it's also the side of the building where you have your loading dock and your driveway and and so on. And I think that's an important uh, side of the building to consider, um, especially considering that um, Parker Street is not as wide as Huntington. So therefore, um, the massing of the largeness of this project uh, will loom over the street. Um, so that's my quick comment. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. We, could do, we could probably generate a long view from Parker and Huntington to show for the next presentation. I think that that's, that's a reasonable ask. Um, not not just a long view. I'd like to see standing across the street at West Campus to see what it looks like looking up at the buildings. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Allison. Any addition? Any additional public comment? Okay, seeing none. Turn it back to commissioners. Um, I know we've discussed a lot today, um, and uh, this project, as you have seen, has gone through many iterations and uh, evolutions. Um, so wondering how you all feel at this moment, if you feel uh, that you know you can refer to full committee and that before committee, uh, the team will work with BPDA staff with continued attention to the architecture little development specifically to the podium uh, and some options there uh, as well as look at the open space uh, in the center well seth, seth in the, oh go ahead david no but you go ahead mimi i'm uh, i'm happy to i just it. had a question it was on a, a clarification uh, by center you mean the area that laura was referring to Yes, the okay. off the off center center. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to make a suggestion to my colleagues, and and it's only a suggestion because I do think that what um, Seth just said is correct. We there have been a number there. You've studied the, this massing a lot, 
And um, I, I would suggest this, that um, you study it one more time, uh, that doesn't preclude it coming back to full commission, um, that um, you you um, take this, take the, the full commission, not as a, not the way we usually do, and Seth, you can also tell me that you disagree with me, um, not the way we usually do and say this is the conclusion of this process, but that this is one more look at the massing. Richard made a suggestion. Um, we made several suggestions about massing. Um, and I think with some specificity, we're not trying to, to redesign the entire project. We're looking at what's the relationship between the East Building and the West Building. How does it affect um, how how similar should they be, or maybe can they be more different? What is the space in between, and what's the right dimension or the best dimension? All factors. And if you came back and said, "Look, here's out of this last meeting, last subcommittee meeting, um, we heard three ideas to be studied, uh, and here here they are, and here is where we are, the proponent." who is spending more time, more energy, highly qualified uh, to do a really good building here. And uh, here, here's our here's our best recommendation. I, I guess there's some risk in that for the proponent. Um, but um, uh, I, uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to avoid is we looked at what we looked at it one more time and we came back to the same place we were before. I, I guess I'm suggesting we looked at it one more time. We found three alternatives. This is our preferred, but the commission has the ability to see the alternatives. And David, I kind of agree with that because I feel, okay, in terms of public realm, they've addressed, you know, the master plan for the Avenue of the Arts with a welcome mat. I think we've really focused on that center space a lot. Um, I think we've, they've addressed materiality. I feel the level of discussion of do we move it over or do we do that felt like to me, we're as a group, we're not all gonna agree where that should go. And so I'm not sure that's, that's what we should be doing is trying to define what the actual volume of the massing is. But I do appreciate the idea of them studying it further and coming back with their best, you know, it's not even a, a recommendation, but their best proposal. Like we looked at this and here's where we landed because I feel like they've addressed the major items and we we know they're gonna to continue to develop this with the BPDA staff in, in terms of review. So I kind of feel comfortable with your approach for your. So just to be clear, can you hear me? Sorry, just yes. to be clear, Mimi and David, are you saying come back to full committee with that or do another subcommittee meeting? Well, I'm suggesting the full commission. Me too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to be clear. Yep. I think there's value. I just want to also clarify because, David, you mentioned that this is not necessarily fully baked, but that the idea that there's I think there's value in having full commission look at this because mm -hmm. I think it is, it's a project deserving a lot of attention. This is an important, you know, development on the avenue of the arts. Um, and, and you are hearing a variety of opinions, but I think there is some convergence around some key themes. So having additional eyes of the commission weigh in, I think could be, could be quite valuable at this point, rather than yeah, having that, you go that, through that, another yeah. round of a, a mixed bag of people, different people weigh in. Sorry, David. Yeah. No, I completely agree with you on that. I think, I think that we we might, uh, if we all sat down individually, come up with different answers. I think uh, expanding the to the full commission it, it will help us come to a conclusion for the proponent. Yeah, and I do think it'll be a good chance to, uh, I guess I, I agree with you, you said, Richard, or I sympathize with uh, 
every committee you get different people here that have different things and you're you've responded to the question that somebody asked two meetings ago that isn't at this meeting right so i i acknowledge that and i think this would be a chance to frankly from your end to have heard all of this and kind of propose or present this is how we have taken this and 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 synthesize all of this feedback into something that we feel confident about uh maybe assertively uh presenting to us and, and to, to that group for uh more uh declarative uh hopefully conclusion here appreciate that thank you could i could i also suggest that when you come back um that you come with uh shade some shade studies that include the trees in them because i think that will help us see whether or not whatever move is made how that affects that space um, I do I do know that you'll find this out when you look at sunshade that, you know, to the um, west is the better place to put the trees. But, you know, is it curved? Is it straight? You, you guys have to study that with the sun, the sunshade. Um, but I think that will kind of put that to bed if you add that those factors into it. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Seth, I have just one question. If, 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 as when we come back, um, am I right? Uh, assuming it's kind of a working session, and therefore it's as I would call into question ten minutes. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a it's a presentation. Go ahead, Seth. Yeah, yeah. I, I would I would say if it's yeah. if it's being referred to committee uh, or sorry back to um, uh, full commission it is a presentation okay. but based on the comments mm -hmm. received today i would encourage you to come to that presentation with uh, an exploration of multiple options uh, some of which you very explicitly heard tonight um and to show why ultimately what you're you know moving forward with is the best choice and how long is this time frame um for that peter i'll give you eight minutes <laughs> <laughs> So, so Peter, maybe just a little bit more context. You're coming back for the vote is basically what full committee is. And so you'll do a short presentation. And the way we like to organize the, you know, the our commission is the ones who are at the last meeting will at least try to, you know, give insight to the rest of the commission what our discussions are or have been or at this particularly the most recent meeting. And so I think our voices will probably be ones of the first ones you'll hear, and then you'll might get differing opinions from the other commissioners. But yeah. it's a long agenda, so ten minutes is 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 definitely where we think your presentation should be. Well, I'm good with working with BPA tasks in the meantime. So, yeah, and, and I would and, suggest and certainly. Uh, sorry, Laura, just um, you know, yeah, try to keep the presentation to that smaller amount um have all this other information in the appendix and as commissioners uh ask questions and make statements we can get into the additional material and and just to be clear for the public realm i'm perfectly satisfied with both spaces so if the public realm focuses on the sunshade study for that central space it, in other words i'm trying to guess i'm trying to say <laughs> The focus should be on the building, right? Because I think that the public realm is pretty solid, um, save for the one thing we talked about today. I'm trying to give you two minutes back. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate and, it. And we, we will be. We appreciate that, Laura. And I, and I think that uh, the group is uh, on our side. Uh, we've got our marching orders. I think it's pretty clear. I think we've we've done our best every time to come back to try to address and try to put that professional uh, uh, work right in front of you. So I, I think we're pretty confident that we've heard a lot today, uh, like we've heard in the past, and we're going to, uh, Peter and his team will go back and uh, present something to you that really shows that we're listening. And this is the best for the site that we can put. And this is going to be a building that's going to come alive after it's done. So it's, uh, I, I think we're all in the same page right now. I, I love the eight minute presentation, Peter, because. Yeah. It is what it is when you come back, buddy. Uh, we can't go. <laughs> <laughs> All in. <laughs> <laughs>
And just to, to clarify, I know this has been a long discussion, but it I think it's important for us or Seth for staff to set this up for the commission. So while it's coming back to full commission, this is unusual that we're not we're not necessarily recommending this. We're saying we have we've been re we've reviewed this several times. We would like additional input. We have asked the proponent to kind of give it your best shot, given all that you have heard, but we felt that it would be appropriate for, for full commission to weigh in. Well, Anne-Marie, after you get that eight-minute presentation, I'm hoping you're going to recommend <laughs> what you saw. I would hate to think that no matter what you see, you're not going to recommend it. I'm hoping that Peter is going to spend some time with the rest of the team and us, and what you see that day, you will say, hey, we're recommending this unless we blow it. And, I understand. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And I would just clarify, um, Anne Marie, that technically it is, you know, uh, recommended for final consideration and a vote of recommendation. But you, you're not saying how you should vote. <laughs> so uh, it still gives the commission, I think, full discretion as needed. Okay. Uh, hearing no additional comments at this time and in lieu of a formal vote, and since this is not a formal vote, there are no official provisos, but I believe you've heard a lot of very useful information today and minutes and recordings will be available um, as you like. Uh, I understand a recommendation for final consideration and a vote of recommendation is in order. Uh, I don't see any dissensions, so you all are moved to full committee. So thank you so much. Uh, this concludes the meeting this evening. Thank you very much. Proponents, commissioners, members of the public, we thank you for your time. As thank always, you. thank you. Thanks, thank you. Everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night.